In this video, we'll introduce the concept of inflation. So what is inflation? Generally speaking, inflation can be described as the, the increase in the price of goods and services over time. And when we say over time, really we don't mean um, year, usually we're talking multiple years, we're not talking months or weeks, we're talking about um, a slow change or a slow increase in the price of goods and services over time. Or we could also describe it in a different way, we could say that inflation is also the decrease in the purchasing power of money over time. And most governments will actually measure this inflation. We refer to inflation uh, by the letter F. And this can be measured using things called uh, price index. In Canada, you may have heard of something called the Consumer Price Index, and that is Statistics Canada measuring the price of what they call a standard basket of goods and services, um, and how that price, the, the prices of the goods contained in that basket change uh, year to year. And by looking at the Consumer Price Index, we can calculate the value of F, or inflation. Your text will describe in more detail how something like a consumer price index is used to calculate inflation. But for our purposes, uh, today we're just going to talk about the value of F. So as a basic definition, um, uh, this is pretty good, I think, for inflation. In order to understand how to use inflation in engineering economics problems, we have to introduce some new terminology. And the first term I'd like to introduce is something called current dollars. So current dollars are, uh, in some texts, they're, actually, they're called actual dollars or nominal dollars, but in general, current dollars are the amount of money you can imagine you take out of your wallet at a certain point in time, or the amount of money you put back in your wallet. The actual, actual dollar amount that you pay for something or that you receive at a given point in time. We call this current dollars. So I could say that it's it's the amount of money, uh, let's say, paid or received at a point in time. And like I said, you can think of that as the actual dollar bills that come in to your wallet or go out of your wallet. In contrast, we'll define something else called real dollars. And real dollars are really the, uh, let's call it the, the inflation corrected amount Oops. Amount of dollars. That's how I like to think of it. Um, often the inflation corrected amount of dollars needs to be expressed um, in reference to uh, sometimes a so-called base year. So if you think for a moment, uh, you may have heard 
your parents or grandparents talk about how they purchased a house in 1960 for $20,000. Um, well, they're talking about current dollars in 1960. That doesn't really mean much to us today. What we'd like to know is, well, what's the, what, what's the real dollar amount equal to the value of our money today that your parents or grandparents paid for that house in some other year? So when we talk about real dollars, we need to reference it to some base year, and then we correct for the amount of inflation that occurs between that base year and whatever year we're interested in. Um, so we'll also introduce, um, let's say, the, the variables. We'll call, we call current dollars C, and we call real dollars R, and uh, sometimes for real dollars we'll use, if, if time t equal to zero, is the base year. Sometimes you'll see it written like this, where n is the number of years that the, away that the current um, dollars are being spent. And the way that we relate current dollars and real dollars is actually using a technique that we've already learned. It's basically the time value of money. And instead of using i for an interest rate, we just simply use f as a correction. And the way it often looks is I can write the value of R equal to the value of C divided by 1 plus F to the N, where the value of current dollars in N years away from the base year uh, for where we're interested in calculating the real dollars uh, is also is the exponent in this equation. So you can see we're really just discounting the current dollars by the amount of the inflation. And we're compounding it by the number of years. You could also write this um, like this, where we can say um, we would take the current dollars times the P given F factor at the rate of inflation for the number of years between the current dollars and the real dollar year at, that becomes our base year. So let's pause for a moment, um, read the problem, and I think this idea is perhaps best described using a problem. So pause the video, read the problem, and when you're ready to see the solution, restart the video. So in this problem, we're we're faced with a scenario where a company wants to purchase a piece of equipment 15 years from now. So let's assume that t equal to zero is, is now. So today will be our base year for our real dollars. And the problem tells us that the amount of current dollars 15 years from now that this equipment will cost is two million. So what that means is 15 years from now, the company will need to pay a dollar amount of $2 million to buy that equipment. And the question becomes, well, what does that really mean today in real dollars? If we'd like to get an idea of what is this equipment really worth if we had to pay for it in an equivalent today's dollars, what would it, what would it be? So we're also told in the problem that the inflation is 5%. Incidentally, that's quite a high inflation rate. Um, inflation typically in Canada for the last several decades hovers around the 2% range, sometimes lower, sometimes higher, but we'll assume a 5% inflation because that's what it says in the problem. And what we'd like to know is what's the real value of this $2 million 15 years from now? And becomes quite simple. We just plug in the formula where we take our C15 divided by 1 plus the inflation rate to the power of 15 and we'll sub our $2 million in here. And if we work out what that is, we end up with $962,000 
We could also do this problem using the um, uh, P given F factor for N equal to 15 and an I, or in this case an F, equal to 5. Uh, either way, we'll end up with this value. And what that really represents is this is the equivalent today's dollar amount that would be required to buy equipment that costs $2 million 15 years from now. So in concept, uh, the mathematics are very similar to the time value of money calculations for interest, but the concept is really based on this idea that the prices of goods and services goes up over time or that our purchasing power of our dollar decreases over time. So this is a very basic example on how to do calculations with real and current dollars and how to understand the concept of inflation.